Pods, what prompted another scan or diagnosis for Josh? He just wasn't improving as what we um, as, as well as what we expected. So um, I thought our medical staff pretty much handled handled it really well in terms of let's get another scan and and see what was going on there. So it was just him in constant pain, or wasn't able to run, or yeah, he tried. He, he was doing a little bit of exercise and still in a little bit of um, discomfort. I wouldn't say pain, but just a bit of discomfort. Was there any danger of further damage, or is it just a matter of making sure he's cherry ripe when he does come back? In terms of if he got another knock, could it could it um, you know, could break or was there was there a risk? Uh, no, I think it's just it's just the cartilage from what I, my understanding of it is. So that's just going to take some time to heal. Whether that's a couple more days or weeks, we actually don't really know. So there's no realistic timetable at the moment. Uh, no, there's no realistic timetable. No. So what's what's his rehab program look like roughly? Uh, today and going ongoing. Getting back, getting back to full fitness, how, how will that work? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think what we're trying to do is just get him to settle down first and his discomfort, as I said before, get that to settle down and then from there he can progress with his running and his contact work. But um, I think he's doing some running today. What about Mitch here? So he met with the surgeon, the specialist that he has to meet with to determine the next course of action for him? Uh, he's meeting with him this afternoon, so I can't tell you what he's going to say, but um, yeah, it's really disappointing for Mitch. I mean, he's in really good form, um, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll treat, treat carefully with him. Is Manziel the man to come in? It seems like the obvious one. Is that a decision that's been made yet? He played really well in his um, round one game, and we're really happy with him in the SNFL. So we've got match committee after training today, and um, we'll let you guys know pretty quickly after that, I reckon. So how did your four run shape up? You haven't, since McGovern came into the team round one last year, you haven't had two of your four key tools missing at the same time. Yeah. You will this weekend, obviously, with Jenkins and McGovern. So how does that change the dynamics of your team? Well, the, the best part about uh, the time of year it is, is the guys have worked really closely together, the forwards and all the other guys, all the other the lines have worked closely together. So um, you think about Menzel and Knight, they've worked with the forwards all pre-season. So it's not as if they've been playing SNFL for a long period of time. So that dynamic is definitely still there with anyone that comes in our side. And um, I think you've seen over the, last, the first three weeks, guys haven't played and next guy just sort of steps up and, and plays a role. So I think we educate our players really well on what role they have to play and they just know what's uh, required of them. Do you have to find another tool though with, with two of your four keys not there? Do you have to bring in someone else and who will it, maybe bring in an O'Brien who can share with Jacobs and the Rock and one of them can push forward or use Otten up there? How's that going to roll out? Potentially, potentially. And I think that's a, a probably a good question during match committee which will happen after training. Yeah, right. that's a good question. What about Beachy? Have you been impressed with him? Is he up to AFL level, you reckon? Yeah, he, uh, he played an AFL game in the JLT and unfortunately I think he did his soleus or his calf at the time and then he's been a bit of a slow build back from there. So his form last week was on the way up and um, you know, we can definitely see Beachy pushing for selection at some time during the year because of his, um, th his talent. We love talking about the um, forwards kicking a lot of goals, but as the defensive coach, how impressed have you been with how they've been operating? Uh, yeah, look, the backs probably um, have been pretty good, but I think our, our total team defence, to be honest, it starts with our forwards and our mids putting pressure on, and that's been um, a real highlight for us over the pre-season, to be honest, and it's something we work really hard on, um, and the backs sort of um, maybe maybe get the reward off that, And um, but uh, I've been really happy with the whole team defence. Have you, have you been working with the forwards more so on defensive pressure and that type of thing in the pre-season? Uh, no, we do that. We've done it um, for the whole... Like every, every forward line across the competition works on a defensive pressure and our forward line um, has still got some way to go but I think it's, it's improved a, a hell of a lot over the, the time I've been here so um, it, it does make the job for the, uh, the guys down the field a lot easier. When they you got, have you got confidence in O'Brien's form pre-season and last week and what he did last year to come in and play a good role? Yeah, well he was emergency last week yeah. and he was emergency for a reason so any guy that's named emergency for the Adelaide Crows we believe can play AFL footy. So. He can. Hoss, there's been a number of hamstring injuries now, you know, since the start of the year. Is that something that's been reviewed or will be reviewed pretty soon? We review our medical staff every week and our medical staff and our, and our fitness team do a fantastic job on trying to work out um, the exact um, reason for every injury um, and there's no correlation with all the hamstrings we've had so far um, from what my understanding is, so um, it's not a concern at this stage. Well, do you sort of conceded 90, 90 and 80 in the first three games. You say your team defence is shaping up well, it's just that you've been able to blow sides out of the water with your own high scoring. How do you make sure that, yeah, I mean, 90's probably getting up there, isn't it? 80's okay, 80's manageable to score to concede? Yeah, 
I'll probably should correct myself in saying I'm happy, but there's always room for improvement in our team D, as well as our, um, when we've got the ball in our hands too. I mean, we've scored high scores, but um, we've missed opportunities at the same time as well. So uh, in team D, that's the same sort of thing. I think we've missed, opp missed opportunities to not allow the ball inside 50 and also not allow scores. So we've still got a, a fair way to go to, to get to where we want to get to. Does it take pressure off the defenders knowing that you're capable of putting 140 on the board? Uh, no, nah, defenders are never happy, to be honest. I, I'd, uh, I reckon our defenders are, are, are pretty motivated to keep scores to zero, but that's never going to happen. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they're, they're a pretty motivated group. What about the first quarter's pods? How do you stop teams getting a jump on you? You haven't won a first quarter in the first three games this year, but you've, as we said, blown the teams out in the last three quarters. What, what happens in the first? Yeah, there's been, a, I think, from what I've read, there's been a bit of rhetoric around that outside. Internally, I look at the teams we've played, uh, we've actually played some quality teams, um, so they've come out and they've, they've played really well in that first quarter. Um, there's nothing that we need to do from a, a change perspective before the game or anything like that. Um, what I've loved is the resilience of our players at quarter time to come in and say, look, we're probably not playing as well as we can, but they've actually um, reset and, and, and started playing the way we wanted to play. So there's some positives out of that. Is that a mindset thing, do you think? No, no. How do you explain a lapse in... Uh, no, as I said, I think it's we've played some really good teams, so credit to them. They've come out and, and played really well. Um, but I don't think our, our players are, are ready to go before the game, so I don't think it's a mindset thing. Is it hard for your homework on Essendon, given oh, they're last very different to last year and they've kind of had a bit of a mixed result the last couple of weeks? Um, it's hard to do your homework on every AFL team, to be honest. Um, we, we do a fair bit of work on opposition, and uh, our opposition analysis guide does a lot of work on, on all the teams. Um, but Essendon last year, I mean, they're a different side of what we played towards the back end of last year. Um, and their forward line is, is pretty dangerous. So as a defensive coach, I'm, uh, I'm looking at Danaher, Hooker, um, Fantasia, and some of their resting mids down there have a, are really dangerous as well. So. Uh, it's, it's hard to do your homework on every AFL team, but um, I think we do, it, we do it pretty diligently. You spoke about match committee being tough. The balance between talls and smalls in your forward line and getting the right balance, how delicate is that? Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit about form as well. It's not just, I mean, we, we, we put a tall out after round one, like text and play, and we put a small in. So um, I don't think it's, it's too much of an issue for us. We just play guys who can, um, are in form and, and can play the role, really. But I don't think it's um, as big as what potentially externally, external people make out to be. Um, how's, Eddie, how's Eddie Betts going uh, after the, all of the... Um the commotion, I guess, o over the weekend, and now both clubs coming together and taking a stand, um, creating anti-racism. Yeah, I think look, Eddie's um, for our game nationally. Wouldn't there wouldn't be a better ambassador for our game? There's probably no better ambassador for our club, to be honest, than Eddie Betts. So um, the way he handles these situations is absolutely phenomenal um, internally, um, and I think the way the AFL, our club, and Port Adelaide have handled the um, the situation is is um, is outstanding. So I mean, Eddie is Eddie, and he'll rock up on um, Saturday night ready to play. Did, did it cut you caught the pods? Did it cut you to the core a little bit? I mean, we're all sort of. Ethnically diverse backgrounds. Uh, it it makes me pretty upset, to be honest, to see what um, to see that transpire. And um, but as I said, I think uh, the the good thing out of it is the way that um, both clubs and the AFL handle it. To be honest, and I, I um, yeah, I commend them on that. Well, guys. Sorry, guys. Well, for the last one. You're speaking of players that are in good form, Crouchy on the weekend, 40 touches, like 60% of the game. Yep. Does he just need a, another couple of runs before he gets in the AFL or is he just showing yeah. that he can do it? Yeah, no, his talent obviously at the SNFL level is outstanding and at AFL, at AFL level too. And I think we've just got to build with him. Um, he missed a fair chunk of pre-season, so we're not going to do anything silly with, with, um, with Brad, but um, he'll work his way back in the team. Sorry, so he'll be, 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 be set for this week pretty much? Yeah, I think so.